Welcome to your community. This is your hometown. This is Walton Entertainment. This is where you can hear from the community and those making a difference. We explore topics, local festivals, arts and entertainment, and local news. For this program and much more, visit us online at yourlocalstream.com. That's yourlocalstream.com. First, they said cigarettes were safe. We know how that turned out. Now, they say they didn't market e-cigarettes to teens? Fact, more than one in four high school students are vaping and 80% say their first e-cigarette was flavored. Vaping is harmful to developing brains. The reason we think vaping is safe? Marketing. Same lies, different day. Tell Big Vape to quit lying. To me, the most important thing about being in the human race isn't winning, it's participating. Living life to the fullest, emphasis on living. This is what makes life, life. Yet how much of life are we willing to miss out on? Untreated hearing loss affects our mobility. It increases the risk of falls by 50%. Good hearing health is essential to staying engaged and doing what we love. Hear well and stay vital. Get a hearing health check every year. Activity buses. Um, we have 116 members. 626 students were projected to be around 660 for the 23-24 school year. Our operating budget is $8.5 million for this current school year. We have 100% graduation rate and 100% college acceptance rate. And we will be uh, in Macon tonight as our boys are in the final four as well. If both teams win tonight, then It'll be a showdown on Saturday for the championship. So. <laughs> and um, I'm on a charter bus tonight with 50 of my closest high school friends. If anyone wants a Thursday night adventure, you're welcome to come join me. Awesome. Thank you all. Let's give them a round of applause for that. Okay, two more questions. And we're getting close on time, so let's try to answer as quick as we can. Um, tell us three things that make your school or school system unique. So in Social Circle, one of the things that we hear all the time that makes us special has to do with the climate of our schools. We, they just feel like a small town family school. And part of that has to do with our size. It makes it easier for us to be able to get to know one another. And our teachers have tremendous love and patience with all of our students. And I always say that I'm so pleased because our parents send their kids to school expecting that they're gonna be really polite and good to one another. And you see that when, when you're in the hallway working with the students, our teachers are very lucky to work with them. Also, we have excellent athletic facilities. If you haven't visited those, um, it looks like a junior college, our athletic facilities do, and it makes it much easier for us to recruit really awesome coaches. And one of the, another unique thing about our school district is that about half of the students who attend our schools actually live outside of the city limits. So we have students in Walton who choose to attend, students in Newton who choose to attend, and then we also have students uh, from Rockdale and from Morgan as well, and that's something that we're really proud of. Well, you've all heard from Mr. Hobbs why our graduation rate is 100%. <laughs> <laughs> While we're proud of our 94.9%, we've, we've broken our own record for the sixth or seventh year in a row. No, in all seriousness, folks, most of you have been in Walsh County for a while, and you don't have to go back too many years to go find a graduation rate in some of our high schools in the 50s. So a lot of things have changed in the last decade or so in Walton County. I appreciate you to the choir here. We're proud of our 94% financial efficiency rating. There's very few districts in the state of Georgia that push out the results that we have based on the money we spend. We're extremely efficient, believe it or not, in public education. We are extremely efficient in Walton County. You should be proud of that. A big reason for that is our exemplary board of education. We have seven board members that just simply show up to make the best decisions they can for our children based on the resources we have. That might sound simple, but it's absolutely not simple if you look in districts around us, not just in the state of Georgia, but around the country, especially in the last two, three years of COVID, and some of the nonsense that goes on doesn't happen in Walton County. Most school districts have five to 20 people lined up to complain about something at their board meetings. And I, 
I just to add because I say I because it's I guess my fault. Our fourth speaker in seven years and that's through COVID in Walton County. You should be proud of that. Our financial efficiency, our board of education, and uh, what we have on in Walton County. I think one of the things that makes Victory unique um, is that we're not an independent school. We are a member of our, our um, um, not a member, I'm sorry, a ministry of Victory Baptist Church there in Loganville. Um, we share the campus with them, um, share opportunities. The church has events the school participates in and vice versa, and just a great relationship there. And I think that strengthens um, our school as a whole because we do have that support from our church and from our pastor. A um, second thing I would say is the low student-teacher ratio. Um, average about 15 to 1 in most of our classrooms. We have a few that go over that and a few that go under that. But that does give the teachers a little more one-on-one -on -one time with students as needed. Um, and then I would also say the culture and climate of the school is, um, I know others have referred to that as well. Right now, the size that we have allows us to have a lot of interaction across all the grade levels. Um, I was telling the people at our table, we had our kindergarten and senior graduation pictures today. So the kindergartners were so excited to see their senior buddies, you know, just get to know them by name. Um, my, my, our staff is very intentional in reaching out, um, encouraging students and, and parents and trying to make contacts outside of school, whether that be coming to athletic events or going to some special event that their student has. And I, I encourage that and want them to make those connections outside of school. And I think that impacts a positive culture within the school. Okay, George Walton, uh, I think what makes George Walton unique is first of all, our academic program, as I mentioned, we have 19 AP courses. Uh, most of our classes are 12 or less in, in those AP classes. Uh, that, I think that's first. College counseling department at George Walton is second to none. Uh, they start working with kids in the ninth grade to get them ready, make sure they take the right courses. Uh, I've had parents tell me their entire tuition for 12 years is worth what happens in the college counseling department their four years of high school. So we've got the kids lined up. Uh, most of our kids get applied at five and six schools and are accepted at almost every one of them. And, and make a decision, of course, where they want to attend. I think the third thing is our winter term, uh, two weeks after the Christmas holidays. Uh, we had 25 kids internationally travel this year. We've got partnerships with schools in Spain, France, and England. It is a great opportunity for our kids to go over there and be in those schools. Those kids as well from those countries come for a month to George Walton to attend classes uh, with that partnership. Uh, and then our internships during the winter semester as well. We had 95 kids out in the business community doing internships. I hope some of you had some of those kids this year. Uh, but if you would like to have some, just contact school. Uh, we have a lot of high school kids that do internships to try to determine what their interests are. Uh, three of the uniques at LCA, and this is kind of a common theme, I think, for us, is it is a family environment. Um, teachers are often invited to weddings and baby showers of students and alumni that have, you know, graduated and moved on. And so those connections and those relationships that are built when they're in middle school, high school, elementary school, just carry on um, through life. We do provide a rigorous education with a biblical worldview. So the AP courses, the dual enrollment courses, uh, being able to offer all of those higher level courses as well as your college prep and honors level courses with that biblical worldview is, is what a lot of families are looking for right now. We do partner with parents to ensure that every child gets what they need. So that individual attention, uh, especially to the details, like Gary mentioned earlier with the college admissions process, um, it's, it's making sure that families feel supported from day one to graduation day. And we prepare well-rounded students. Uh, we try to support growth opportunities. If a student has a desire to pursue something um, outside of a traditional school setting, uh, we wanna work with that family so that we can support that student if possible and um, it let them explore those other opportunities. I know that some of what I might say might be so education ease, but in the in-grade curriculum is something that is very different about our school, I think. Uh, you start in pre-K, you're with the same curriculum through the eighth grade, so things that you do, like study the Greeks and Romans, you start in pre-K, and it just goes to a different depth, and how it um, impacts the world gets deeper and deeper as you go up in the school. So that is different. Uh, the personal responsibility, the students are responsible for keeping their spaces clean, cleaning up after they eat lunch, 
uh, keeping the campus. Uh, they all know how to change the toilet paper, change the paper towels, do all those type of things, turn on the vacuum cleaner. I was surprised to find that there were children in middle school who did not know how to turn on a vacuum cleaner. And I never dreamed I'd have to teach somebody how to hold a broom. But there are things that our children today do not know. Um, and I guess the other is that goes along with personal responsibility is the real life activities, which we then, as they get to high school, we promote that you're either in work study or dual enrollment. And if that is not a goal of yours, then we're not the high school for you. So I would say those are the three unique things. That's great. So, uh, last one, and y'all can tell us in a minute or less, um, a success story of one of your students. And Dr. Frank, I know I told you to tell one from each cluster, but... No, I've got to tell three. <laughs> I, 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 I thought about this question for a long time, and I thought about a lot of students over a lot of years, and, you know, I won't pick on any one student back then. You know, we've, we have high school folks that in one year will have up to 18 kids that are home in one of our high schools. And so if you don't think there's a need out there, um, come see us. We'll tell you some stories. Angela could tell you 50. Just rattle them off that quick. I could too. But I'll take a quick point of uh, privilege. And since she asked to come to lunch with me, I recognize my junior daughter, Anna Kate, who's one of our students at Warner Grove High School. I consider her a success story. I can't imagine getting ready to graduate high school, however long it was ago, with 30 dual enrollment college credit hours to walk in wherever she's going as a sophomore. She's here because she just finished surgery at Athens Orthopedic Clinic with what an experience that is. I mean, to have those kind of options, she has access to every AP course there is, a gazillion career pathways, and the options that our students have are endless. If we can get them over some of the other challenges they have, but uh, she's a huge success story. I'm proud of her. I'm proud of the, the woman that she's become, her heart, and uh, proud of her. And she's in youth leadership, Walton. <laughs> um, I too thought about this for a good bit. Um, and just a, a, a recent, this school year, a young lady um, came into our school back in the fall after the school year had begun. She comes from a very, very rough background, um, is in the foster care system, a um, lot of trauma in her background. And the first two days of school, I think she spent more time locked in the bathroom, hiding from us. Um, pulling out her device, telling her parents or her foster parents, come get me. I hate this place. I hate these people. This is awful. Um, I totally so admire foster parents, but these two were, they just loved her unconditionally. They still do. And we wanted her to see that we loved her too. And we had to help her work through that, getting comfortable with where she was. Um, sorry, it makes me emotional because she's been one of my students this year too. Um, but just to see how much she has grown. She has some learning things and, and so much going on, but I see her in the hallway now where before she would not want anything to do with me. She comes up to me and hugs me and says, hey, Miss Burge, how you doing today? And she'll tell me whatever's going on in her life. And she has a smile on her face. She talks to the others in her class. Um, we're helping her still with grades, and, and I know she's gonna be successful there as well. But it's just been so awesome for her to recognize that people do love her and love her for who she is, and for us to have an opportunity to share that love of the Lord with her. And Kate, I want to talk to you about coming to George Walton next year. <laughs> You're not going to be there. I have to tell you about uh, <laughs> I'll have to tell you about our valedictorian last year. His name was Noah Higgs. I've been around thousands of high school kids in my life. I've never seen a young man like Noah uh, play basketball, other events, uh, humble, uh, helped his classmates with everything. Uh, Noah wanted to go to Caltech. Now, I don't know if you know a lot about Caltech. They only have 2,400 students. It's even probably one of the top three elite engineering schools in the country. Uh, they get thousands of applications from the top students in the country. They have a 4% acceptance rate. Noah Hicks is playing basketball and attending Caltech this year. Uh, one amazing young man. His dad is the president of Davidson College. His mom's a professor. Uh, they were at Emory last year. His dad got the offer to go to, to Davidson. But unbelievable family, unbelievable young man. A real success story. 
we got a lot of them in George Walton, but Noah was one that just stood out to me uh, that I've known over the last two years. Yeah, this was a, a tough one to answer. We have 25 years um, of amazing success stories, and I think the biggest thing that, that we get excited about is just watching students carry um, their faith and their love for Jesus out into whatever aspect of life they choose. So we have students uh, serving in the Armed Forces, uh, the Atlanta Police Department. We have uh, Rachel Myers, who was a UGA double dog. She's pre-law. She was the president of the uh, UGA student body. Um, Connor Monda is an entrepreneur in Athens who does amazing installations for companies like Chick-fil-A. Um, we have people who have started hybrid schools in other states, um, alumni that come back to teach and serve at LCA here in wages was named as our Director of Curriculum and Instruction this year. She's an alumni. Evie Bruno, tons of nurses at CHOA. She's working in NICU. Her brother, Zach, um, is graduating from Liberty very soon with an aviation degree and will be flying commercial fl uh, flights. I never would have thought that if I had known that <laughs> about Zach uh, in high school. Um, we also have Ian Snell serving as a youth minister at Journey Church. Uh, we have right here from Southeastern University, Devin Ford, uh, and an article done on him and the impact he's making on the basketball court and off the court now that he's done with college. Uh, another interesting fact, in 25 years of existence, we have 26 LCA sweethearts that have gotten married. So that's a success right there. Um, and I don't know if you've ever heard of an artist by the name of Tyler Hubbard. <laughs> Um, but he is an LCA alum as well. So. Well, one of our success stories uh, is one of our seniors. He started with us in the sixth grade, uh, very interested in technology. Back when Athens Tech, or the state still did move on when ready, he took the Accuplacer at the end of the eighth grade. He scored high enough that he could start his Associate of Arts program in the ninth grade. So he's been doing dual enrollment since he was in the ninth grade. He started uh, work study at the school so we could teach soft skills that are so important in the workplace. Then he did his internship in the technology department at the city of Monroe. He finished all of his coursework to fit graduate from high school in December. He has one semester left to finish his associate of art degree. He is 17 years old and he is now a full-time employee in the technology department at the city of Monroe with benefits, probably making more money than I am. <laughs> and um, it's just so wonderful. He loves his job. He just, and it's so, it's so um, fulfilling. Also that he's staying here. He's found the job he loves here. He's able to complete all of this and uh, give back to our community and that's real important. I, can I add just one little <laughs> story? This has to do with more people than just my school. Um, when I, I was putting gas in my car about two weeks ago and this woman across from me said, Miss oh, Dickinson, and I said yes, and she said, do you remember me? And I called her name. I taught her at Carver probably <laughs> early 80s and uh, she said, do you remember making a camera out of a oatmeal box? And I said yes, and she starts to tell me in detail how to build a pinhole camera. I could have put her on YouTube. You could have built one and developed your own film from the details that she gave me. Then we talked about her daughter who was in, um, at that time it was Communities and Schools. It's now Angela Yarman with the Student Success Alliance. She was also in Ivy's program at Monroe Area High School and all. Um, all of us, she went with me with one of my own grants to Fort Valley State for a summer to do some college stuff, but all of us poured into her, poured into her, and she went to Georgia State. Um, Angela still, and I think Ivy still poured into her at Georgia State. She needed that support. She's now in Texas, definitely making more money than I'm making. And, um, but what I want to say is sometimes it's not the mountains we move, it's the brick we put in the wall. We have lots of success stories also out in the social circle, and actually two of my favorite success stories are here in this room, and I'm not going to embarrass you by calling out your names, but the things that we do really well out in the social circle 
because we're small, we can spend a lot of time figuring out what each child's individual desires are for their path. So whether it's that you want to go straight to a four-year college, we can help out with dual enrollment and advanced placement classes. Or if you'd like to go straight out into industry, we have great work-based learning opportunities and can help make that happen. And we're very fortunate to be the industrial hub of the county, and we've got great partnerships with the industry leaders out there who take on lots of our students and work-based learning. And that has really helped many of our students who might not have come away from high school with a success story, that they're now able to walk out with experience in really high-paying, high-end technical jobs, and they are making a lot more money than any of our teachers make, and we're really proud of those folks. Awesome, I know we ran a little bit long, but let's give them all a round of applause. Um, really quick, March 22nd, we have our Walton Powell VIP bus tour. If you're in the current Leadership Walton class, you're gonna be on the bus anyway, but if you're not, you're still invited to attend, and you can go see these goals um, on the location, on the bus tour. So if you're interested in that, just let me know. We'll send out registration information next week. Reality check programs, Carrie, wave your hand. Carrie's right back here. See her if you want to help with one of our reality check programs. It's a program we do with eighth grade students at Game of Life. It's amazing. Um, see her if you want to help with that. Make sure you check your online listings. We'll be going to press with the magazine very soon, so make sure all your information is correct. Um, in April, we will not have coffee connections. Our luncheon will be back here April 13th with post-legislative update. Our golf tournament is April 28th. Um, this month, we will uh, get applications ready and nominations ready for the adult leadership program and our youth leadership program. So if you have a current high school sophomore, um, make sure they listen out for the announcements at, the, at one of these schools and they're eligible to participate. And um, if you know someone who might want to be part of Leadership Walton, let's just have all of our graduates of Leadership Walton raise your hand, or if you're in the current class, you can raise your hand. A lot of you in the room. So if you want to know more, you can ask me or see one of them. Um, thank you so much to Grace Monroe Church for hosting us. Thank you to um, David. Thank you to y'all for um, Crawford and Bull for being our sponsor, one of our sponsors today, and to Meta. And um, thank you all for being here. Thank you all again for what you do. So we're done. Good morning and welcome. I'm Dina Huff, the Executive Director for the Partnership for Families, Children, and Youth. It's been a minute, so I wanted to come on here and tell you all a little bit about what's what we know of that's going on in Walton County, share some information um, that our partners have going on, and as well as um, our youth development component here at the partnership. For our youth development uh, part of the partnership, we have an awesome opportunity to go into Social Circle City Schools. Uh, we were invited to go in and participate and host and facilitate a teen wellness outreach program. And this is for after schoolers. It does not have to be, uh, the students do not have to be a part of the Youth Advocacy Board. They can be any high school student at Social Circle City Schools. So let me give you the dates of those in case you know of a student that goes to um, Social Circle Schools. And it, they are calling it a wellness outreach program. And our kids um, actually came up with this idea because due to trauma and the aftermath of COVID, um, kids are suffering tremendously and they need somewhere just to, um, you know, let loose and, and through this wellness program, uh, we actually put some rooms in place that they can go pet animals, they can make um, gardens, they can pet horses. There's a number of different activities that we have set up for this wellness outreach. So the, the next date for that is going to be March 30th at 3.30 at Social Circle High School. And then uh, May 4th and then May 18th. So if you know of someone in Social Circle High School and they're not a part of this, please reach out to them and let them know. And you can always call us for, for additional information on that. 
I'm not the expert on that, but Tisha Fian, um, our youth development director is, and she can answer any questions that you may have. So we know that spring is coming around, April's coming around, we're still in March, yes, but um, April is just around the corner and that is Child Abuse Prevention Month and a Child's Voice Child Advocacy Center um, will start their community pinwheel garden and in Monroe, since we're talking about Monroe here, uh, they will have that Saturday, March 25th from 11 to 11.30 at the First Baptist Church in Monroe. And um, the pinwheels uh, represent, if you see them around town in April, they represent the safe, healthy, and happy childhoods that all children deserve. If you wanna sponsor a pinwheel um, in honor of Child Abuse Prevention Month, come out and help, help a group of people, and I hope to be there as well, plant the pinwheels. And you'll see them, um, You'll see them in Covington, Loganville, Social Circle, and Monroe. Um, so if you want in more information about that, you can contact me or I can give you um, and call me and I'll give you their, their number as well. Also, uh, we have a regional job fair in Newton and Walton and that is on April 13th um, and that's on a Thursday from 4 until 6.30, free admission. And that's going to be at Monroe Area High School, 300 Double Springs Road, Monroe, Georgia. And um, that is going to be a big event, so we hope that you will look into that. And if you are um, interested in that, you can contact me and I will put you in touch with the folks that are hosting that um, to, so you're able to get more information on that. And we have collaborative meetings each month and we travel around with our collaborative meetings. Um, we do Monroe, Social Circle, and Loganville. So this month, um, and um, next week on March the 21st at 8 a.m., we will host our Walton County Collaborative Meeting at Church at the Grove, and that is in Social Circle behind Blue Willow Inn. So those are open to anyone, um, and we would love to have new faces there and sharing opportunities for families and children in Walton County. Um, so if you're up and available and would like to attend those, please join us that morning. We have a light breakfast and coffee and you'll be able to share your events and your information. So if you have any questions about anything that I shared or you just want to know more about what we do here at the partnership, give me a call on my direct line and that's 770-207-3175. And thank you for joining. Hi, and welcome to Monroe Walton Center for the Arts. Today I thought I'd talk a little bit about our book club. It's called Not Your Mama's Book Club. And we meet the last Tuesday of the month at 7 o'clock here at the Arts Center. Uh, we have a Facebook group that if you're on Facebook, you can ask to look for Not Your Mama's Book Club on Facebook, and you'll see, you'll find that group, and then you can ask to join, and then you'll get updates through Facebook, but also if you get our newsletter, it's always in our newsletter, you can come in and talk to us or give us a call, but the book for um, March is remarkably bright creatures and I am in the book club I've already read the book and it's really a charming book and uh, maybe one of my favorite books that we've talked about but we have a good group of ladies that meets um, and uh, we usually bring in some snacks and sit around and chat we talk about the books we do stay on topic <laughs> and not chat about everything in the world. Uh, we do talk about the books that we are covering for that month or the book that we are covering for that month, but you'll enjoy it. You'll make some new friends and if you're a reader and if you've been looking for a book club, I um, invite you to come and, and try out our book club. Like I said, it's the last Tuesday of every month at seven o'clock it is good to join that Facebook group if you can, uh, Not Your Mama's Book Club, so that 
you can respond and let us know if you're coming. Um, but it's it's a great it's a great group, and you'll enjoy it. And like I said, this book in particular is a is a really interesting book, and I think it'll be a fun book to discuss as well. Um, some of the other things we have coming up are um, Unicorn Day, which is one of the most popular events that we have here. It's a citywide event, and it's April 15th. And, uh, you know, the shops up and down this, the main street here will be doing things and having some specials. Uh, we'll have workshops here, all kinds of fun things going on very kid oriented of course and uh, so we'll have a pottery project I believe the pottery project will be actually making a unicorn um, and then I think we'll have some other workshops as well uh, painting a unicorn will be one of the workshops but as always all of our workshops on our soiree days and that will be our soiree for April um, they're open to all ages. Uh, they're fun for all ages. We make them specifically um, things that anybody can do. Uh, very young children, like say seven or six and younger, will probably need some help from their grown up that's with them to complete the projects. But young kids, teens, Adults, everybody enjoys our soirees and has a great time. Um, and like I said, that's Saturday, April 15th. It's a citywide event. There'll be things going on up and down Broad Street here. And we will have our workshops here and lots of unicorn themed um, gifts that our artists and makers have made. I know that Julie is already working on bracelets with unicorn charms. So it's just a great fun day out. Hopefully we'll have a face painter here. We may even do fairy hair here again. That was really fun when we did that. So be looking for that. That's in April. Um, our watercolor course will start again. It filled up for the February, March um, session. A new watercolor course will start on April 14th, I believe it is. Um, so we have things going on all the time, free events, free writer events, free maker events on Thursdays where you can just come and make and do things and learn things from other makers and artists. That's Thursdays, Monroe Makers from 1 to 3. Um, the book club, of course, is free. Um, once a month, we have the open uh, jam with the old time music folks. That's just free to come and listen. If you play an acoustic instrument and know old time music, you're welcome to join in. So all kinds of things going on, usually at least around 70 events um, and classes going on every single month. So it's a lot to keep up with, but if you come in, you can pick up the class list. We always keep it updated. Some, some weeks I have to update this a couple of times uh, just over the course of one week. But if you come in, you can pick up this class list. You can ask us what's going on. Of course, you can visit our website, which is always updated, MonroeWaltonArts.org. Check that out. You'll see everything there. And also, don't forget, mark your calendars for May six um, that's the garden tour day we have five local gardens on the tour they're all pretty much here in the city limits of Monroe um, I believe they are um, but you'll be inspired we have some smaller in-town gardens that will inspire you with uh, maximizing every inch of your garden to make it interesting and charming and then we have some larger gardens as well uh, we have a medicinal garden where you can learn about herbs and uh, different uses for plants um, so just a whole range really of really great gardens on this tour 
the tickets will go on sale March 25th, and they're, the early bird price is $25. So be looking out for that. The, the tickets will go on sale the 25th of March. The event is Saturday, May 6th. Uh, we need volunteers still, and if you want to volunteer, you volunteer for half of that day, and then you get a free ticket to see the gardens for the other half of the part that you're not working. So that's your gift from us to thank you for, for volunteering for us. So if you're interested in any of that, you can visit us here or go to the website, MonroeWaltonArts.org, and learn all about it. We hope to see you soon. Hi, I'm Debbie Davis Haynes. I'm part of the Walton County Master Gardeners. This is the beginnings of our plant sale. Everything here has been propagated by the Master Gardeners, and we will be selling this at our annual fundraising plant sale, April 15th at the Ag Center on Criswell Road. That's also the location of our new extension office. So we have lots of vegetables, flowers, we'll have some shrubs, a few trees. We've just got a great variety of plants. So we look forward to seeing you Saturday, April 15th from 10 to 2 at Criswell Road Agricultural Center. Thank you. Hey everyone, my name is Joel Burnsett and I'm the Ag and Natural Resource Agent at the Walton County Extension Office. And today I wanted to let everyone know that uh, we have started accepting applications for our annual uh, Walton County Master Gardener classes. Uh, these classes will start um, the day after Labor Day, which this year is going to be September 5th, and it will run through uh, December 7th. Classes will be held on Tuesday and Thursday mornings from 9 until noon here at the new Walton County Extension Office which is located at 1258 Criswell Road Southeast Monroe. And the deadline to have your application in is June 1st so if you want any more information on our classes or anything like that you can call us at the Walton County Extension Office or you can stop by our phone number is 770-267 one three two four and we look forward to helping you serving you and seeing you thank you hi i'm jody johnson i'm here with another recreation report uh, glad to see that spring is in the air and uh, all of our spring sports are are well underway all our teams are out at the uh, parks practicing um, I will mention a little bit about our winter sports, our basketball programs. We had a few teams that uh, all participated in our GRPA, the Georgia Recreation and Parks Association All-Star Events, and our 9 and 10 boys and our 7 and 8 girls will be advancing to the state tournaments uh, the first week here in March. So hopefully uh, they'll have a good show and uh, I think our 7 and 8 girls are going up to, uh, uh, to Dalton and our 19 uh, boys are going over to Tucker. Uh, over in DeKalb County. So good luck to those teams. We hope they'll come back and, uh, and uh, win us a state championship. But again about our spring sports, our baseball and softball, we had a huge number of kids that came out and signed up this year. Uh, also with our soccer program and track program, we had over 2,200 kids that, that signed up and uh, they're all getting ready. Our opening day for all of our events will be March 18th. Hopefully the uh, weather will continue uh, like it has for the last couple weeks and let our teams uh, get prepared and ready. Uh, you know, they've all got their uniforms and schedules and uh, all anxious to uh, get out there and participate. It's a lot of fun for a lot of uh, participants and the parents. They get to go out and watch their kids, the grandparents watch their kids and uh, grandkids play. So we look forward to, uh, to starting those programs. Uh, another thing I do want to mention is the, uh, the Recreation Department now is administering all of the uh, reservoir. If you don't know about the uh, Walton County Water Authority, the, the reservoir that was built several years ago, uh, it's out towards uh, the Hard Labor Creek area, uh, down Social Circle, the Fair Play Road uh, area. It's a 1,300 acre pond that's there, and now the Recreation Department is administering anyone that wants to go out and go fishing there. So all you would have to do to get an annual membership to the, uh, to the reservoir, you'd get a sticker that you'd put on your car, and you could launch your electric boat only, 
no gas motors. Uh, of course, you can fish off the bank, uh, but to, uh, to park there, it's either $10 per day and you can pay at the site. There's a little drop box there and if we do honor everyone, you just go back and put the tab back onto your car. Or you can buy an annual uh, sticker that goes in your car and it's good for the entire year and those cost $60 if you're in county. Uh, out of county fee, they add an additional $15 to those. And again, you can uh, utilize that to launch your electric boat, go out and fish all you want. And, and, and what I'm understanding is there's a lot of fish being caught. There's some crappie down there, and this is the time y'all know about the dogwood trees blooming, and then the dogwood, and then the uh, the crappie start biting. Uh, of course, everybody knows springtime is the time where uh, a lot of the fish come from the deep areas, come to the shallow areas, and make it a lot easier to catch. So, uh, my understanding they're catching some pretty large fish down there uh, over the, the last year. Or so so it's a great place to go there's a few fishing events and we're going to start putting those on as well maybe our fishing derbies that we usually do at our some of our uh, smaller ponds we may extend that to the uh, reservoir where you come in and actually fish for free to uh, get people to know where that place is at uh, there are plans to expand the um, the recreational opportunities down there to so build a pavilion down there for different events there's uh, there's already a dock down there you're really not for fishing we plan on building a, a dock just for the fishing areas uh, and then we'll put a playground there's bathroom facilities already there so it's uh it looks a lot like if you went to one of the uh, local state parks one of those ponds but it's actually a, a much larger pond it's uh, pretty expansive uh, that's why it's a little easier to fish from the uh, from a boat um, but yet uh, you know you need to be a little experienced because you are on a you know 13 acre pond so you need to know really a, a little bit about angling doing a get out there and fish on, on such a large body. If not, I would encourage just stay closer to the dock even if you're launching a boat. So any questions with that, you can go to our website. We're in the process of adding a lot of information on our website at waltoncountyga.gov about the opportunities at Hard Labor Creek. Again, we just took that over uh, since about a week. So uh, we're still expanding and trying to get the information out there. You can buy those things at any of our community centers in Loganville, at uh, Meridian, at Felker Park in Monroe, or in Social Circle at our new South Walton Community Center. Uh, we always encourage everyone to come out and go to our website, but come to our community centers and learn what's going on. Our staff would love to give you a tour of the facility and let you know about all the programs that we have. So until next time, thank you very much. Don't have Hello, I'm Kenny Sargent with Keep Walton Beautiful from the Walton County Recycling Center. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Uh, the first thing I wanted to discuss is uh, effective March 10th. Uh, we will be going up on our scale rates here at the Recycling Center. They will, uh, from March 10th on, they will be $65 a ton uh, for any of the items that are disposed of here at the center. Uh, basically, the, the you know the landfill cost went up, and and we were forced to go up to kind of match uh, the the increase we're seeing. Uh, so, uh, starting March 10th, everything that's disposed of here at the recycling center, when you come across the scale, will be $65 a ton for those disposal fees. Uh, Again, if you have any questions about that or, or you know, want to know more, uh, give us a call here at the Recycling Center, 770-267-1421. We'd be happy to discuss it a little more, uh, hear any of your questions or concerns about that. So uh, give us a call. Again, that goes into effect uh, March 10th. Um, we're you know starting to ease into spring and we're, we're starting to schedule some of our events and the the one that we have scheduled right now uh, we're going to do a document destruction event on saturday april 22nd from 10 until 12. Uh, we've partnered up with the loganville lions club uh, and we did that as well last year and uh, we'll it will be at the city hall in loganville uh, from 10 to 12 on Saturday, April 22nd. That is Earth Day. Uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, give us a call. There are no limits on boxes that can be brought in. Uh, with the new company we're using for document destruction, they, they don't put any limits on how much paper you can bring in. Uh, as some of you may remember in the past, uh, with a different company, they, they had that limit at, at like two banker boxes uh, per citizen. Uh, 
that is no longer the case with the new company so if you've got more than that feel free to bring it uh, and again that will be at the Loganville City Hall Saturday April 22nd uh, from 10 a.m. to 12 so uh, give us a call we'd be happy to answer any questions about that we've also started looking uh, ahead to uh, another paint recycling uh, or paint collection event that we want to do probably around May or June about the same time as we did it last year uh, but we are going to start doing those paint collection events twice a year so just be on the lookout I'll keep you updated with uh, uh, once we have a date set in stone for that but we are uh, kind of inquiring about that and trying to figure out a date and we do plan to, to have another of those uh, in the spring early summer so be out on, on the lookout for that uh, one of the other things I you know I say it a lot but it's getting to be that time of year and a lot of people are trimming back their crepe myrtles and, and starting to you know get ready for spring and we've been turning a lot of cars away here at the recycling center and sending them to the inner landfill uh, if you come down here with with you know limbs and branches and shrubs and grass clippings leaves all of that stuff we're gonna have to send you to an inert landfill so I just wanted to get that message out there so you're not wasting a trip coming out here trying to bring something we just simply cannot accept uh, one of the other things that went into effect back in January uh, as some of you may be aware of is we can no longer accept mattresses here at the center uh, right now we're, we're sending you know folks out to the the Walton C and D landfill out on 78 uh, they're collecting those mattresses but presently we, we can no longer accept those here the the landfill where we take our uh, our solid waste will no longer accept mattresses so um, we are doing our, our due diligence we're trying our best we're, we've talked to a couple of different companies we're trying to find a way to get back to accepting mattresses again because you know we, we want to provide that opportunity for our citizens to get rid of their mattresses at a reasonable rate um, so we are working hard to try to get that figured out and and we're hopeful that we will be able to in the future but as of right now uh, we aren't accepting mattresses here at the center if any of that changes uh, you know we'll be updating that on our on our website our Facebook page uh, the next time I do one of these TV spots I'll be, be sure and mention it if we do reach some resolution with that uh, but presently uh, we, we aren't accepting mattresses here so if you come down here with them we're, we'll be trying to direct you to, to somewhere you can take those um, I do feel like I put a lot of information out there this time again if you have questions about any of that uh, if you have questions, any other environmental questions or concerns you have, uh, litter questions or concerns, feel free to call us down here, 770-267-1421. We'd be happy to answer any questions we can. We'd be happy to get you started recycling. Uh, we'd be happy to, to, to teach you how to uh, use our scales for disposal and, and to get started uh, doing your, uh, your trash disposal and things that way. Uh, again, come on out and see us. Let us show you what we're doing here. Uh, and until next time, take care. Hey, thanks a lot for tuning in today. As always, we'll show you some of the dogs that are here at the Walton County Animal Shelter. I just wanted to show you this little guy. His name is Wolfie. Now, don't get too excited because he's already got a lot of adoption applications and he's actually scheduled to get adopted today. But I wanted to show him to you to let you know that we get all kinds of dogs at the Walton Animal Shelter. We get big dogs, little dogs, cute little guys like this. Uh, so no matter what you're looking for, it'll come through at some point. You can always keep your eye on waltonpets.net. We post all the dogs and cats there. If there's something particular you're looking for, you can just go there, uh, keep a watch out, and maybe someone like little Wolfie here, uh, you'll be blessed to bring him into your home. So don't forget about looking at waltonpets.net to see all the dogs and cats that are at your local animal shelter. This is Don Juan. He's a pit. 
a year old, not neutered, lots of energy. Here we have about a four month old pet mix puppy, lots of energy, wants to be loved, he wants to be with, he did good with the animals that y'all just seen going through with them. He's got lots of energy. This is Gabby and Gabriel. They're two strays that we received last week. And we could, we assume they're just, they're siblings because they're the same age, they look the same, and they were found together. And they haven't had much interest on adoption, but they're only about 10 months old. Hey guys, Isaac over at Reboot, giving you a Reboot tech tip. Um, just want to talk a little bit today about kid safety on the internet, um, especially nowadays with all you know, kids having the smartphones and the tablets and uh, laptops and all that stuff. Um, it, it can only take like a click or two for kids to get in trouble, um, especially if, if they're not taught rules and stuff like that. Um, it's, it can be very dangerous very quickly. Um, I, I am not a big uh, Apple person, but one thing I do love about Apple is um, on their phones and their iPads, um, they have a program called Screen Time. Uh, and you can lock down that phone or that iPad. If you only want them to go to certain websites, you can do that. If you only want them on the internet for a certain amount of time, you can do that. If you don't want them installing uh, all this social media stuff, these crazy apps like Snap and Kick and uh, the, you know, the dangerous stuff, Twitter, whatever it may be, um, you can lock that down. Uh, so I'm, I'm a big, big, uh, you know, uh, supporter of Apple in, in that way. So if you want to give your kid a phone, uh, an Apple iPhone is a great way to go. Or if you want to give your kid a tablet, um, an Apple iPad is a great way to go. Um, you know, if you can't quite figure that stuff out, the Screen Time app, you can always take it to a place and they can help you out, or Apple Support can help you out, stuff like that. Um, but I'm big on that. Uh, one other thing too I'll say about um, kids being on computers, uh, it's, it's, it's gotten a little better, I would say, uh, lately with, um, you know, like Google helping out, um, Microsoft Bing not so much, but Google has helped lock down a lot of stuff on their browsers, especially like Google Chrome I'm talking about. If you take and um, turn on uh, the, the safe search, there's a safe search. Um, you know, little toggle thing that you can turn on and that helps a lot. Uh, it can help on regular uh, browsing, but it can also help on like YouTube and stuff like that. It's not 100%, but it can definitely help. Um, one other thing I'll touch on too, so there's apps out there called accountability apps. Uh, there's one that I've used for uh, kids called Ever Accountability. Um, it doesn't stop kids from going places, but what it does is it tracks everything. Even these apps on their phones and stuff like that that are supposedly erased stuff after they look at it, it, doesn't, it keeps track of everything, even stuff that gets erased. So if they're doing something crazy on their phone or their tablet or their computer, um, you know, that, all that stuff can be tracked, and um, that's a great tool. Again, it's called Ever Accountability. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm a big... Uh, supporter of teaching your kids about the internet and stuff like that because it, it can be so dangerous so fast so um but anyway uh stay safe and please keep your kids safe on the internet again isaac with reboot giving you the reboot tech tip the mission of project renewal is to provide the support and services necessary for families and individuals in the georgia counties of rockdale newton and walton to live in a violence-free home There was this guy um, that I met, was online. Um, we were talking for a while. He just seemed, you know, really sweet. Um, good conversation, you know, day by day. How you doing? Hello, beautiful. You know, all the things that a woman would want to hear. After about two months, you know, we wanted to meet in person. So we actually decided to meet in person on my birthday of last year. Um, and we did. We actually met in person, and of course, you know, when you go on your first date, you talk about your background, where you come from, you know, your latest, your last relationship, and, 
you know, the do's and the don'ts of what you want in your new relationship and, you know, how can, you know, you make something better in a new relationship. So when we talked about that, everything just seemed, you know, perfect. Like he was looking for the same thing that I was looking for, somebody loyal, somebody honest, and somebody, you know, to eventually love. And of course, you're looking for marriage. We, we, we argued for days and days at, at a time, but it started getting worse. We started doing it in front of the children. We started, you know, um, just basically raising our voices. The children, you know, started to cry. They started to beg us, you know, to stop, you know, arguing, to stop crying. And one day um, it was raining outside and, you know, he was he was upset with me and we were arguing and the fact that I didn't speak to him it basically made him angry I noticed that my silence made him nervous and it made him mad because I wouldn't say anything I guess me speaking more and telling him how I feel of being angry and showing my emotions made him feel better versus me just being completely silent silent and having nothing to say at all so I just started losing myself I just started you know just to send myself from my family because I didn't even feel worthy. I, I felt like I shouldn't I shouldn't be around people because the fact that he seen me around people and I was happy, he felt like I was happy with them and not him. So I just started, you know, being miserable. I was miserable laying down at night just wondering, why am I here? How did I get here? How did things get this bad? Like, how, how? You just wonder, like, where to go wrong? Since Project Renewal, um, oh my gosh, when I got here, um, they didn't see it. Like, nobody ever seen me down and out, but believe me, I was, like, down and out. Um, I'm never a person to show my emotions, so when I got here, I'm like, you know, hey, hello, how you doing? And things like that. When I got here, when I say that they were so welcoming, you feel the love when you walk in the door. You feel the love um, when they're going over, you know, everything with you about how things work. And, you know, um, they hold you accountable. And I really like that. It's not like, okay, you're grown. You got your own kids. You know, go. You know, make sure you do what you got to do. They hold you accountable, but they're right there holding your hand as well. So you do what you need to do. But after you've done what you needed to do, what do you need us to do? I love that. Um, I've never, you know, had people that, you know, really care, show love and affection. I mean, in the morning, they're happy. At night, they're, ha they're happy. Um, they're, they're, they check on you. Um, and I just and I just love that. Um, I've never felt, you know, so secure, you know, at, you know, at a place, you know, where, you know, where in need. I, you know, just thought that they would look down on me because, you know, you know, I'm here, but I mean, it's, it's a wonderful atmosphere. They really care and they also help you with, you know, a lot of things that whatever you need help with, they try to help you um, as best as they can and they will. And as long as they see you doing what you need to do, they see that you, you know, you're working, they'll work on your behalf as well. All right, cool. Let's get started. Sure. Don't ignore the law. You must call 811 at least two to three days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Mm, mm. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Debbie Davis Haynes. I'm part of the Walton County Master Gardeners. This is the beginnings of our plant sale. Everything here has been propagated by the Master Gardeners, and we will be selling this at our annual fundraising plant sale April 15th at the Ag Center. Crystal Road. That's also the location of our new extension office. Now, they say they didn't market e-cigarettes to teens? Fact. 
More than one in four high school students are vaping, and 80% say their first day cigarette was flavored. Vaping is harmful to developing brains. The reason we think vaping is safe? Marketing. Same lies, different day. Tell Big Vape to quit lying.